Hey everyone, this is Todd, the Cybertruck Truck Guy. And today I'm gonna to be doing the first part uh, or the first in the series of videos, uh, three part series about why the Cybertruck is gonna be a towing god. And I don't use that term lightly. So today I'm gonna to be talking about why torque is so important in towing. And then I'm gonna give specific ways that the Cybertruck torque delivery system is vastly superior to the torque produced by gas and diesel trucks, especially when towing. As a bonus, if I have any good bloopers, I'll put those on the end, and I usually do. So every time you talk about this, everyone wants to talk about range. So I'm letting you know ahead of time that I'm gonna be dealing with range in the third video. That should be the final video. There should be three. So again, if you like these videos, please like and comment and subscribe on them. Now remember, since I'm a little guy, sometimes the YouTube robot brain doesn't put my videos in your feed, even if you are subscribed. So if you wanna make sure you can see my chattering fat head, hit the notification button. Thanks. All right, so let's talk about torque and towing. So there's a lot of aspects that go into a good towing vehicle, but the foundation for all of them is torque. If you don't have power, you're not going anywhere. Now the challenge with torque is that it's easy to feel it when you're in a vehicle, but it's hard to explain what it is. I actually contemplated skipping any attempt at trying to explain it, and I was just gonna refer you to some other YouTube videos, but when I tried to watch those videos, they were kind of hard for me to actually understand and conceptualize what exactly torque was. So I thought, eh, I'll give it a shot and see if I can do a better job. And for me, simpler is better. So I'm gonna start with an analogy that everyone can understand. Uh, Y'all know what this is, it's a wrench. And if you've ever had a particularly sticky bolt to loosen, you'll know that a longer wrench is gonna help you loosen that bolt. You might have even been in a situation where you had a nasty one and you actually put a pipe on the end of your wrench to give you more power to actually get that bolt to budge. That force that you're applying is actually torque. That's the literal word. It stands for rotational force. And the more resistance you're trying to overcome, the more torque you need in order to overcome it. It's that simple. Okay, now let's say you got that long wrench and then you got that long pipe and it's giving you lots of torque and you finally get that bolt to break free. What do you do? Do you leave the pipe on the wrench? No, you take the pipe off and you switch just to the wrench and you rotate that until you get to the point where the bolt is moving freely with no resistance. Well, then what do you do? Well, you get rid of the wrench and then you just spin the bolt off with your hand. So as the resistance becomes less, you need to deliver less torque to the bolt. In order to do that, you switch the method in order to increase the speed of the rotations of the bolt. Okay, so now in our little analogy, each time you change the wrench size, you are changing gears. The longer the wrench, the lower the gear. The effort you put into turning the wrench, that's like your engine RPMs. Even with a long wrench, you're still gonna have to work harder than just spinning the bolt with your fingers, especially when it's a stubborn bolt. And even when the bolt is loose, grunting and straining would be inefficient to remove the bolt. It'd also be kind of weird. So each time the bolt rotates, that's like the rotation of your wheel. Sometimes you need a lot of energy to force it to do that. Other times you can spin it with very little energy and less force. Okay, now let's assume that the bolt you're trying to loosen is close to the ground so that you can't do a full rotation with the wrench. So now you gotta rotate the wrench, take it off, reposition it, and rotate it again. And that takes time and energy in order to do that. It's not very efficient. So what tool would you want to improve the job? Well, now you're gonna want a ratchet wrench. That really speeds things up. You're not really spending any more energy, but you're just doing it more efficiently. Now in our analogy, the ratchet wrench would be a diesel engine. For reasons that aren't really important to this video, diesels are better at producing more torque faster than gas engines. If you wanna know more, you can just go search for why diesel engines produce more torque than gas engines. It's not complicated, but I don't need to address it here. Now, if gas engines are like regular wrenches and diesel engines are like ratchet 
wrenches, then electric motors are like putting a socket on the end of a very powerful drill. No switching from longer wrenches to shorter ones. No gaps in turning while the wrench is rotated back to its original position. When you use a wrench, you're using the same kinds of physical forces that a combustion engine uses, except your arms are the pistons and the wrench is the transmission. Electric motors eliminate all those moving parts and inefficiencies. Just instant delivery of massive torque and constant delivery of that force until it finally reaches its maximum speed. Okay, so the key takeaways here are that torque is the force that is exerted to create rotation. The force requirement is highest when it's trying to overcome the most resistance. As resistance decreases, the force can be reduced even while the rotation is increasing. But at some point, the capacity to rotate is just maxed out. Secondly, because of the nature of how force is delivered in internal combustion engines, there are periods where the force being applied is either reduced or eliminated due to the need to match the engine RPMs to peak gear efficiency or to switch between gears. Thirdly, Internal combustion engines have multiple systems that transfer their rotational force from the engine to the tires. This typically includes the transmission, drive shaft, and differential. At each system, there's a slight loss of efficiency and a slight loss of time. Fourthly, diesel engines are superior to gas engines in delivering more torque at lower RPMs. Lastly, because the electric motors used by Tesla are, at least for now, single gear motors that drive the rotation of the tires directly, the torque delivery is extremely fast and highly efficient. Okay, now we've explained some of the concepts. How do they actually play out in the real world? Well, one way we can understand the specific performance of a specific powertrain is to use something called the power curve. The power curve is really just a way to graphically represent how torque is delivered in a vehicle at different engine RPMs. Those curves do a good job of illustrating how the torque of any given internal combustion engine changes dramatically based on the engine RPMs. Now you can go out on the internet and look at different power curve graphs if you want, but the big takeaway here is that the torque is always changing in an internal combustion engine. It's depending on the engine RPMs and the gear that you're in at the time. If you've ever done a long drive through a mountainous area, you'll have kind of experienced this by the need for the vehicle to downshift when it's on a steep incline. What's happening is that the engine in a higher gear can't create enough torque to overcome the increased resistance. So it has to downshift so it can increase the torque. In other words, it has to switch to a bigger wrench as it rotates more slowly, but exerts greater force to overcome the increased resistance. Okay, so if you're a gearhead and I've messed up, don't get angry. Put your comments, put your thoughts in the comments below. But I think for our purposes, I've gotten it close enough so we can move on. Since most diesel engines are superior to gas in producing more torque at lower RPMs than gas, they really have two big advantages. Number one, they can deal with more resistance from towing more quickly and with less RPMs than gas engines. And number two, they are more fuel efficient than gas engines. Typically a gas engine towing gets six to eight miles per gallon. Yeah, it's that bad. And when you're towing with a diesel, you can usually get 12 to 15 miles per gallon with the same load. Generally a diesel will get 40 to 75% more work done with the same amount of fuel. And this is why all 18 wheelers are diesels. So why are diesel engines in all trucks? Well, it's basically because they're expensive to build and expensive to maintain. Switching from a gas to a diesel engine typically adds eight to $10,000 more to your purchase price. But they're also heavy polluters and they require complicated exhaust systems that have their own sets of maintenance costs. Oil changes are more expensive with diesels, and when something goes wrong in the engine, they're generally more expensive to fix. So in the end, unless you're doing a lot of towing or you put a lot of miles on your truck, diesels don't make economic sense. 
So that said, there is simply no comparison in the user experience of towing with a larger, uh, larger displacement diesel engine compared to gas. Diesels handle their extra cargo with far less effort than gas. They go, they climb hills effortlessly, they accelerate from stops better, they're much better at reaching highway speeds when entering from an on-ramp, and then they're better at maintaining their cruising speeds with less shifting and less engine whine than their gas counterparts. The problem is that if you want that kind of diesel pulling power, you're going to have to upgrade to from a half-ton truck such as the F-150 or the Silverado 1500 to a three-quarter ton truck, such as an F-250 or a Silverado 2500. You just can't get one of the heavy-duty diesel engines in the lighter half-ton series. Now, don't be fooled by these new diesel engines they're putting in the half-tons. These are mainly for fuel economy, and in some cases, their torque numbers are actually less than some of their better gas engines. So this is why in my video called Stop Comparing the Cybertruck to an F-150, I'll put a link in the notes, I said that the correct comparison for the Cybertruck was really a three-quarter ton diesel truck. Let's talk some specific torque numbers here for a moment. I'm gonna skip any comparisons to half-ton pickups because none of them are even in the league of the Cybertruck, in my opinion. Again, I did a video on this, go look at it. For my combustion example, I'm gonna go back and stick with the engine I used in that video, and I'm gonna compare the Cybertruck to a Ford F-250 6.7 liter diesel power stroke engine. That's a really solid engine, and I think it's currently the engine that has the best peak torque numbers for a pickup truck. Uh, so according to Ford, the 6.7 liter diesel engine will produce a maximum of 1,050 foot-pounds of torque at just 1,800 RPMs. Now remember that as it moves through the gear progression, it has to synchronize the engine RPMs with the transmission. This is a little easier to think about if you think about the classic noise a supercar makes when it accelerates, that wah, wah, wah noise has that familiar pause. In that pause, the driver has to disengage the power from the transmission and then make sure the engine RPMs are synchronized with the gears before re-engaging with the power. Let's look at the power curve of that engine so we can see how it starts with low torque and then hits a maximum torque from about 1800 RPMs to about 2500 RPMs. And then the torque starts to fall off. To achieve the max torque on this vehicle, you need to be changing gears to stay in that RPM range when you're trying to overcome greater resistance, like accelerating on a highway or driving uphill while you're towing. Now compare that to how electric vehicles work. We don't have the Cybertruck numbers yet, but we can assume that the power curve will be very similar to the Model S curve that we see right here. You can see that the maximum amount of torque is available instantly and continuously all the way through 45 to 50 miles an hour, then the torque starts to drop as the speed picks up. At about 70 miles per hour, the torque loss is about 50%, but again, remember that once the truck is to cruising speed, you have much lower resistance starting or accelerating onto the highway. Now, according to the folks over at Mototrend, when they do the math about how much torque the Cybertruck will have, they're expecting the tri-motor to have around 1,000 foot-pounds of torque. Based on the difference between the Model S performance and the standard Model S, we'll probably expect the single-motor Cybertruck to be in the 600-pound-foot range and the dual-motor to be in that 750 to 800-pound-foot range. In fact, according to Elon Musk, the new Roadster actually exceeded 7,000 feet-pounds of torque and on a related note from a potential Cybertruck competitor, GM claimed that the new electric Hummer can produce more than 11,000 pound-feet of torque. 
That means that even the single motor Cybertruck will have more torque than any of the half ton trucks out there and that the tri-motor truck will rival or even perhaps exceed the best heavy duty pickup truck diesel trucks out there and it will deliver that torque in a far superior fashion. So after all that, here are the five reasons that the Cybertruck will be the king of torque mountain. Reason number one, it will be instant torque. The torque will be 100% available from the moment you hit the pedal. There's no engine to spool up. There's no transmission to engage. Peak torque at the moment the tow pushes the pedal. The reason Teslas win all those drag races is gonna be the same reason it'll be a dream to tow with, instant torque. Reason two, it will be continuous torque. There is no pause while gears are switching. There aren't a bunch of subsystems sitting between the power and the rotation of the wheel. Every little pause an internal combustion system needs impedes the performance and the transfer of power. Reason three, it'll be linear. Unlike an internal combustion engine that has wide swings of torque delivery based on the interplay of pistons and gears, the electric motor spins and pushes with a nice, smooth, predictable manner. No lurching or whining like an internal combustion engine. Reason four, it'll be simple. I just can't emphasize this enough. The drivetrain of a modern diesel vehicle is astonishingly complicated. It's composed of multiple systems that have to work together seamlessly in order to operate effectively. The Cybertruck powertrain will be shockingly simple with just a maximum of three motors. Not only does that simplicity result in much higher efficiency, it will be far easier and cheaper to maintain compared to the diesel engines it'll be competing against. Reason five, it will be cheap. I made a video, sorry about all these mentions, about what it would cost for you to recreate the performance of the Cybertruck. Uh, sorry, link in the notes. But with a regular truck, when all is said and done, it would cost you over $100,000. The big reason why you'd have to spend so much money is to match the towing utility of the Cybertruck. Because you had to upgrade to a F-250 and then you had to put a diesel in it. This gives you a base price of $55,000. Then you gotta put diesel in it. And I calculated the differential between electric cost and diesel cost over a five year period was gonna add another $15,000. That's $70,000 to buy and drive a comparable tow vehicle to the Cybertruck. Nothing about off-road, nothing about um, speed. All the other extra features that you get with a Cybertruck are on top of that. No ICE vehicle can match it. Lastly, I want to show you this little video clip that Elon showed when he was demonstrating how fast the Tesla Semi was going to be compared to a standard Semi. Let's show you what that means in, in acceleration. So one thing we care about Tesla is we really care about performance. We want, it, we want a, a vehicle that feels incredible, that accelerates like nothing else. Uh, let's show what the, the truck, uh, what, what it's like to be in a Tesla truck. This is real time. Okay. So, mark my words when I tell you that the Cybertruck, especially the two motor and the tri motor version, will out accelerate a standard truck towing in much the same way as a semi because it has all the same advantages over a gas or diesel engine that the semi has. Trust me when I say the Cybertruck will be a towing god. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you next week in part two. Bye. All right. Compare that to how electric vehicles work. Wah, wah, wah.